All right, and today we got 2005 game seven Spurs versus Pistons. Who was this a game? Oh my god, a defensive game. You know how Troy going to start it. Let's get some stats up in this. Yeah. <laughs> And we go from there. So let's look at the games. How did we get to game seven? Game one, San Antonio won it. 84 to 69. San Antonio won game two, 97 to 76. How did this go to game seven? I don't understand. All right. Game three, it was Pistons, 96-79. Close score to game two. Game four, Pistons 102-71. What is going on here? You feel me? That's a beatdown by the Pistons. And then game five was uh, Spurs 96-95. And then Detroit pulled out the game six with a 95-86 win, which leads us to game seven of the finals in 2005. Now, it was a pretty good game. It was a defensive game. Uh, you you know mostly all the games in the 2090s, stuff like that. It's going to be defensive games, low-scoring games. This game was 81 to 74. Uh, we did we had a couple of guys struggle in this game. Uh, Tim Duncan struggled. Um, Tony Parker struggled. Whew, big time. Um, big time. Chauncey Billups struggled. Tayshawn Prince. I would say Tayshawn struggled. He gave you nine points. Um... I think Rasheed Wallace could have played better, you know. Definitely. Ben Ben did his thing out there. Ben's not an offensive guy; he's a defensive guy. Even though he did give you twelve points in this game, um, but for the series, Tim Duncan for the for the seven games, Tim Duncan averaged twenty points. Manu Ginobili eighteen was well, eighteen point seven, so nineteen points. Tony Parker fourteen points, and Robert Horry eleven points, ten point six. I'm gonna round it up to eleven. All right, Bruce Brown gave you eight. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. Um, then on the other end, Chauncey Billups averaged 20 points for the series. Hamilton, 17. Rasheed, 11. Wallace, 11. So Rasheed and Wallace actually gave you that points that they averaged in this, um, in this series. Uh, then you got McDice averaged 10 and Tayshawn averaged 10. So Spurs had four people double digits. Pistons, as we knew, they were a collective uh, group. They were a collective get their stuff done by collective measures. Somebody breathing into my heaviest head. That's me. Damn, nigga, take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, see, you don't want me getting sleep. <laughs> no. All right, so, yeah, they average six players in double digits. So you, you would look at this game and you would be like, yo, what happened in this game? All right, let's see. When it comes to field goal percentage, Spurs took 69 shots, made 29 of them. I don't know how you win a game, make it 29 shots. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, Pistons, 74, made 31. Uh, that's a 42 to 41 percentage. Spurs lead there. Three-pointers, which I don't understand. Pistons couldn't make a three to save their damn life in this game. They the could fuck make a three is two to 11. Throughout the two to 14, sorry, two 14 whole game, seven and 11 for the Spurs. Then you have three point percentage. They shot 14.3 percent from the field. You're not going to win a game seven shooting 14.3 percent from the three point line. All right. Uh, then we got 63 percent from the nope, um, nope, yeah, I'm telling the truth 63 percent from the three point line for the Spurs. That's how you win game. Uh, we got free throws, Spurs hit more of them, rebounds, Spurs out rebounded, uh, assist. Goes to the Pistons, steals go to the Pistons, blocks goes to the Spurs. Tim Duncan and those guys were down there getting it. But so was Ben Wallace and Rasheed Wallace. They was down there making it hard for Timmy. So even though Timmy did have a bad game, it was it was because of the defense. Yep. It wasn't because Timmy sucked. Timmy had a bad game because they focused on him. And they had two, three guys focused on him. And um, because I think it was McDermott too, or whatever that guy named McDice. Um and then turnovers, which I don't understand. Can anybody guess? I don't know if you guys got it in front of you. How many times did the Spurs turn the ball over? 13. 13. Total turnovers, 26. The Spurs had 26 total turnovers in the game. 
total 26. And fast break points to the Pistons, only eight. That tells me what. Even though they were giving up a lot of turnovers, they were getting back on defense. What I say? Defense again. But, you know, Troy don't like to steal the spotlight, so let me Troy get to his three. <laughs> four. But one's a little shot at the end. But my three keys to the game. My first key to the game was because we know all the way up into the fourth quarter, we went into the fourth quarter tied 57-57. Yep. And, and you know, Manu goes crazy. Tim hits some big shots um, in that third. Robert Horry hits a big three in, the, in the, I mean, in the fourth quarter uh, to give him the lead. And then at the end, it's just a defensive game again uh, with free throw shine for uh, for the winner to be decided. Uh, the final score was 81-74. Um, so, <clears throat> so my three key to the games is the first one I started off with the third quarter because it stuck out, stuck out the most to me. Tim Duncan scored 12 points in the third quarter. Yep. Scored 12 points in the third quarter, and not only were they losing at that time, his 12 points helped them take control of the game in the third quarter, right? My second key to the game is Manu and Hori, right? Manu's first half coming out, I think he had eight points, right along with uh, Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan finished the first half with eight points. Uh, Manu finished that game... Manu finished that game with 23, and Duncan finished with 25. So that's eight points after the first half, and they scored the rest of them in the second half. So Manu, timely shots, timely buckets, timely threes, getting to the basket at will, Euro stepping. Manu was doing his thing. Hori, uh, he had 10 points in the first half. He finished with 15. They had five in the second half. But in that second half, Robert Hori played a lot of good defense. He 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 rebounded a ball that he came from one wing to the other wing to get the rebound. He got a, a key block in that fourth quarter. Like Robert Horry played some really good defense. So I want to give props to Robert Horry uh for playing, you know, well in this game. It's like I said, it's the most points I've seen him score in the game that we watched of him. But my 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 most important key to the key to the game, and I'm gonna kick it to move it, is it was the defense in the paint for the Spurs. Because that's where the Pistons got most of the baskets. They wasn't really hitting shots. They got most of the baskets inside the paint. Um, and then getting back on defense was the two. That, that really big key for me was defense in the paint and, and the Spurs getting back on defense. Because the Spurs the Spurs didn't even have a fast break point either. So the Pistons were getting back on defense too. But then the Pistons wasn't giving the ball that much. They don't give them any turnovers to get fast break. But to have that defense in the paint, to get back on defense, to have Manu, your star, Robert Horry, your role player, and then Tim Duncan, your star, even with Tony Parker only giving you eight points and three assists. <clears throat> like, Tony Parker played bad this game. You feel me? Even with all there that, he still was able to pull this game out. And those are my keys to the game. Move it, I'm kick it to you. All right. So, what I seen during this game was, like Troy said, defense was really the staple. Both these teams wanted to come out and set their, their tone defensively. The difference was it was more of a defensive grind inside, right? Like neither one of these teams really had strong three-point shooters like that. Like outside of outside of Detroit, they do have they did they did have some shooters at that point in time, but they weren't as consistent as we seen prior to those to their to their championship run. So it was they were kind of starting to fall off the wagon a little bit, or necessarily or not necessarily the fall off the wagon will kind of fall apart. Um so the Spurs wanted to key on that on that inconsistency, but the Pistons wanted to key on the Spurs running their offense through uh, Tim Duncan, right? If you look at the first half, they clogged the shit out the paint. Tim was horrible. He couldn't even buy a shot in the, on the inside. And <clears throat> they wanted to do the same thing on the other side, but with how the shooters of the Pistons were and how they can't live and die by the three. Right. The Spurs can't they can't necessarily afford that right now in the game seven. So they have to space the floor. They're bringing all their guys out on the, on the outside. That's giving Ben Wallace all this inside, all this inside work to score. Ben Wallace ain't no damn score. Like he's leading all scores at halftime. There's a reason for that. They're spacing them out. They're trying to bring everybody out of the perimeter. And they're like, oh, well, shit, they're not going to key on Ben. So we're just going to feed him on the inside. And it was working until it wasn't working because Ben eventually went cold and started to really focus more on defense. Um, I think I thought they should have went through Rip uh, Rip, Han Rip Hamilton a little bit more, even though he was um, kind of shaky throughout the whole game, really didn't have a good game at all. But at that point in time, I felt like they were playing too much 
team ball, and somebody needed to be the star. Somebody needed to carry these guys to the next level. Um, I, I felt like it needed, it, needed, it needed to be Prince or or Hamilton. Like, one of you guys need to take over right now. And it was a lot of here you do it, there's a lot of here you do it, there's a lot of here you do it. And I'm just like, okay, somebody has to be that guy here because they have their guy. He's just not playing well, right? They, but they have him. They already know who he, they already know who they have. And in the third quarter, it showed it a lot, right? He starts to go. He starts to to turn it up in the third quarter. <clears throat> there's another. There's somebody else who starts turning up in the third quarter. Who's in the fourth quarter, who needs to get a lot of uh, recognition? When I'm get to him later. Um, because when you look at the box score, they're all n- nobody had over 20 points. That speaks volumes to me because I'm just like nobody wanted to take over and be that guy for this game. They wanted to get everybody involved and they were thinking, oh, team basketball, we got to spread these guys out. And it's like, I get that, trust me. But when you have your Rip when you have your Rip Hamilton's playing 46 minutes, Ty, uh, Tyshawn Prince playing 41 minutes, and Chauncey Bill is playing 39 minutes, and nobody has over 20 points, that's not good. Somebody got to take over. I need, I need somebody to be the guy. Command the ball. Be the guy take and win it for your team, right? This is a game seven. This is a closeout game in the finals. I need somebody to take over and command and command that leadership. We're not going to lose this game because of me. My next point. Tony Parker was absolutely horrible, bro. (laughs) This man was absolutely shitty, bro. Three of 11, 27% from the field, 33% from three, like 38 minutes of nothing but running around, dog. Like, and I want to go ahead and give my shout out to Manu Ginobili, right? Because if you look at it, at the at the at the end of the first half, he had seven points. Tim Duncan had eight, right? So he's really he's really pace for pace, right? And this is when Manu started to get the shine that he deserved when he started to get into the starter rotation. Pop started to recognize the type of player that he was, right? He's just a different kind of dynamic player that gives you a different kind of feel for the game. And his hustle points literally can be game changing, right? Halftime, he goes in with seven points. Third quarter, he really doesn't really do much. He has five points in the, in the third quarter. The fourth quarter, he explodes for 11 points, bro. 11 points, two assists, and three rebounds. And those shots were timely. One big three. He's going three for four, 75% from the field. Like, Manu is in his bag. He's seeing what Tim did in the fourth, in the third, and he's building off that. Because Timmy did have a really good third quarter, right? But he's seeing what Timmy did, and he's seeing, like, okay, look, t- Tony ain't got it. Bruce ain't got it right now. Hey, I got it, bro. Let, let, me, let, 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 me, let me let me drive the boat, okay? So um, for everybody that want to say Manu isn't it, – it wasn't that guy, like go back and, and watch the film, bro. Manu was that guy. Um, my last point, I got to give a shout-out to Robert Ory. Um, he played really, really well. Um, hit some really, really big shots. It was really, really timely on defense. Got his hands in a lot of passing lanes. Was was grabbing some timely rebounds. Um, but as Troy said, this was the, 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 the highest scoring uh, game that I've watched him play right and the shots were were significant um and that was the biggest thing for me like if you're if you're going to be a role player if you're going to be a guy that's going to come off the bench and be the energy player and people are going to look at you as this big as this big shot or big time kind of player or big moments kind of player then let's see it make it be make it be known let it let, let it be shown and i thought that he did that probably the one of the biggest times in his career this game um but yeah, defense rolled this game. Nobody really had a good game. The Spurs shot pretty solid from three because they didn't take a lot of threes. They didn't shoot high threes in volume. So uh, they took timely, smart shots, and that's what really won in the game other than, you know, killing it on, on, on the uh, offensive and defensive boards. Um, that's all I got. All right. So let's back it up real quick because I feel like this has to be touched on real quick because both of y'all said somebody – well, Moose said somebody needs to be that guy. So let's back up real quick because both of y'all both alluded to this is the best game. Y'all saw with Robert Ory this and that scoring. But y'all forgot about game five. I did not forget about game five when Robert Ory exploded. No, 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 no. We didn't oh. I'm saying I didn't watch game five. I, I mean game seven. So I'm talking about in the breakdowns that we had watched the Robert Ory, the games that he was in, which this is oh, okay, okay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna commend you for that though, because Robert Ory did go crazy in game five. So the reason why I brought up game five, because I really wanted to go back and see like who was really being that guy for uh for Detroit because it seemed like they didn't have a guy <laughs> for them in this game to take over. But 
Game five was really the, the big game in the series just because the Spurs ended up winning by one point. Chauncey Billups had his best game in the series. He went off for 34. Uh, it was that that game right there. You know, they always talk about the importance of game fives because every game that was won, the home team won. And the Spurs almost let that one slip away if it wasn't for uh for Robert Ory pulling it out and Tim Duncan having a good game. Saying all that, though, going to, to this game, it's crazy to always go back and watch 2000s basketball because you see the, the defense, the schemes. It's 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 very entertaining to watch. It makes me miss defense and basketball now, and I need some people out there to go back and look what we talk about when we say players don't play defense now because it feels like it does, they don't. They don't even put effort into it. Uh, Rasheed, one of the most underappreciated power fours in NBA history. He had an okay game. Wasn't amazing, but I mean, he shot 50%. Ben Wallace, 60%. The rest of the Pistons, absolutely horrible. I don't even want to take too much time. Uh, shout out to Antonio McDice. He came in and I mean, he had a good game. He came and dropped 10 off the bench. One of my favorite plays. One of the greatest what-ifs in basketball history. Because he was definitely that guy coming out of college. Uh, on the other side, I'm going to give pro- I know y'all put Ginobili on your top 10 last week or whatever this and that. And fine, whatever. But, Boo I know you seen it, dog. Hey, hey Boo Up, you missed it. You missed it, Boo No. James Harden didn't get ranked in the top 10. So, we ain't even gonna, we ain't even gonna touch on that. We're not even gonna touch it. What I will say, though, is uh, one of the underappreciated players in this game because he didn't score. But I really liked what he was doing was Nazem Muhammad. If Tim Duncan wasn't getting the rebound, Nazem Muhammad was under there grabbing rebounds. He, he, he played he, he played really well. Uh Manu Ginobili. I went back and watched the uh the DVD of of this season for the for the Spurs. So going into the game, I already knew what to expect from Ginobili. Ginobili closed this, he closed this thing out. Him and Tim Duncan. The stars showed that night. The stars showed this night. And I mean, I don't have to say nothing about Robert Ory again because y'all know. But boo up, they put Ginobili in the top ten, bro. <laughs> so, hey, I, I feel like y'all purposely picked this game now because Ginobili went crazy in the fourth quarter. It's a no, no, no. <laughs> no, I picked the game, and I just wanted to do a piston game because we haven't done it yet. <laughs> I know you just picked the game because I had said this game before too. So. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, I wanted this game specifically because Ginobili went crazy. Yeah, I like not, not me. I watched it for the first time. I'm not gonna lie. Well, I mean, anytime fucking Robert Horry outplays Chauncey Billups and fucking Rasheed Wallace, you know you finna fucking lose, right? Like that's essentially what I took away from that shit. Like, I mean, this motherfucker got outplayed by fucking Robert Horry. Chauncey Billups do all this. I need to be in that Hall of Fame. And you did this? You did this. You let fucking Robert Horry at 37 years old out fucking play you. What a bad shoulder. Bro. Shit is insane. Don't even try to correct me later on, Chauncey. Oh, he was 33. I don't give a fuck if he was 23. (laughs) You got outplayed by Robert Ori, Rashid Wallace, I love you, but you got outplayed by Robert Horry. More points, more rebounds. That's all I know, Rashid. That should never happen, bro. Ever. Under happen, no circumstance. Bro. You got one fucking rebound, Rashid. One. Robert Horry got five. This shit is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable, bro. Oh, shit. You got five. Something. That's it? That's all you got, Buwa? That's it for your breakdown? I'm done. Let me know, Buwa, keep it short. Tony, anything to add to this game? Oh, my God. <laughs> By the way, Darvin had played in here. I didn't go back and watch it, but uh, from memory and from what, what you know, you guys are telling me and going over the stats just now, um, I do remember as a fan, I was just excited that it wasn't the Lakers. Um, you know, and as much as, as much as a defensive struggle, it was as much as everyone, you know, played like trash night in and night out, 
it was interesting. Uh, Ginobili did really come out in that series. I mean, Ginobili with hair was, I know I wasn't part of that discussion, but when Ginobili had that head of hair, he was, he was a guy. He was a player. And, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, he won that game for him. I, I remember that specifically. Rasheed Wallace always liked him. I think he was in foul trouble that game and McDice got more run. Um, and Duncan had a little better time with McDice on him. That's a good point, Tony. Not to That's cut you off. The yeah. Pistons, the Pistons were in foul trouble. Yeah. Chauncey right. was in foul right. trouble. Right. Rasheed was in foul trouble. And uh, Big Ben. Uh, Big Ben had five. Yeah, Big Ben had five. Ben had five. Chauncey had, had four. five. And then somebody else had four, too. And Tony McDice had four, Tony four as well. Nice. McDice had four, too. Go ahead, Tony. Sorry. Yeah. And, it, I mean, I don't know. I don't have too much to add. Like I said, I didn't go back and, and watch it recently. Um, you know, but speaking on the Pistons as a whole, I think this is where, you know, they made it deep and they kind of had their, their, I don't want to say stranglehold, but they had their thing in the East where they kind of beat guys up and they brought the score down and that's how they're going to win. They had a lot of B players around there offensively. And this is where it showed, you know what I mean? They didn't have the guy, they had a guy each night, but you know, never the one that you knew was going to take over. And this is where the NBA was going to a point. I mean, Kobe and Shaq just won three. We're getting into LeBron time. We're getting into Dirk time. I mean, the Pistons didn't have that type of player. Um, and they won three. I mean, credit to them. But, you know, Ginobili showed up, and uh, nobody on Detroit did. It was a good game, though. Good it was game. a horrible game. It was a good game. Marvin Ham played 18 seconds. Yeah, there was a <laughs> Marvin Ham. <laughs> Coach of LeBron. Shout out my boy Ham. I was waiting for, was waiting for somebody to throw that in there. That's why I brought up Darvin Ham. I was like, oh, Wait, Darvin Ham right says he played no. one minute. Right here says he played one minute. <laughs> he played 18 <laughs> seconds, bro. 18 <laughs> seconds. Hold on, okay? Hey, uh, what probably the end of the third quarter. <laughs> that, boy, that boy Darvin was a, a uh, uh, what they call that shit? A water boy. A take foul. Get out of the game. Get out the game. Zero all the way across, dog. Shit. Hey, go in that foul. Tim Duncan, real quick. Come back. 18 seconds in the second quarter. 18 seconds. That's what it was. Foul him hard. Foul him hard. That's terrible, man. Foul him hard. Run around. For 18 seconds until hey, after. You know what? Go to go take uh Richard Hamilton off the court real quick and, and, and let him rest early. <laughs> go run to the far corner of uh, that side of the court. By the time you get back, it's gonna be halftime. Come back in the locker room. <laughs> For real. Hey, somebody gotta do something, but that's going to be the